What is swatting? We all know this word for an action we make when a mosquito or any flying bug comes around us. It's a natural reflex, right? Unless it's a bee or a hornet and uh, you know what? You better believe I'm not wasting my time swatting. I'm running. I'm running to the next county. Maybe to the next state. But that's just me. For this particular video though, swatting means something very, very different. Welcome back for another episode of True Crimes and Mysteries with Ricochet Reigns. Today we'll be discussing the swatting death of Mark Herring. If you haven't already, please make sure to follow and like for more free video content with Ricochet Reigns. Social media and our networking. Love it or hate it, they're here to stay for a very, very long time. Social networking or social media benefits are basically endless. From building relationships, whether it be friends or otherwise, keeping in touch with family and friends, gaining knowledge, seeking support, campaigning for social good, and the list goes on. Unfortunately, this is not a story about the benefits of social media. Quite the contrary. We're going to be jumping into a short Twitter history. You ready? And I mean it's really short. Twitter, under a different spelling, T-W-T-T-R, launched to the public in July 2006. It was a side project of a podcast directory company called Odeo. I think that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Odeo? Never heard of it. Anyway, within six months after the launch, TWTTR, and it's pronounced Twitter, had become what we now know today as TWITTER, also Twitter. Twitter exploded at the South by Southwest convention in Austin, Texas in March 2007 when more than 60,000 tweets were sent per day and it grew rapidly from there. And it is as we know it today. History lesson over. See, I told you it'd be short. In the year of 2007, Twitter, still a little known social networking entity, was starting to ramp up its presence on the internet. Being one of the first within a couple of weeks of Twitter landing in the social media spotlight, Mark Herring, a grandfather, father, and friend to many, reflected his love for the state of Tennessee by snagging a hot Twitter handle now known as at Tennessee. As Twitter grew, it was clear that Mark owned prime interstate real estate. According to his daughter, Karina Fitch, and I certainly hope I'm pronouncing her first name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. But anyway, according to his daughter, Karina Fitch, every once in a while, her father would receive offers to purchase his handle because it was so cool. Which, as you can already guess, he pretty much declined. Mark maintained his Twitter account until 2020. However, sadly and abruptly, events took place that changed Mark's ability to maintain his account. So, what happened? On April 27, 2020, in Bethpage, Sumner County, Tennessee, Karina, Mark's daughter, said her doorbell rang. When she opened the door, a delivery man said he had a pizza for Mark, but her father had not told her that pizza was being delivered. Across town, Karina's sister, Katie Hoog, and their mother, Fran Herrig, also received a delivery. Weird thing is, they also didn't order any pizza. The pizzas kept coming and were cash on delivery. You know, I didn't even know pizza companies still did cash on delivery, but you know, what do I know? So anyway, Karina went on Facebook and messaged her father, Mark. She said, hey, I need you to call me. And my sister texted, what's this about? And I just said, I just got pizza for daddy at the house. And she said, we just got pizza for daddy at our house too. Something, something was really wrong here, right? 
Karina thought, this must be some kind of prank or joke. Mark's son-in-law, Greg Hoog, however, had a bad feeling it might be something else. Greg said, I thought maybe something was wrong with Mark. I started calling him. I finally reached his living girlfriend. Greg's feeling was confirmed when Mark's girlfriend said, everything is not okay. I'm in the back of a cop car. I gotta go. Karina and the rest of her family eventually discovered earlier that day an anonymous caller demanded Mark hand over his Twitter handle, which was probably worth thousands of dollars. As he had done in the past, Mark refused. Greg said Mark's neighbor called him and said there was police everywhere because a man killed a woman. Wait, what? The police arrived at Mark Herring's home. Mark went outside his house with a gun since it sounded like someone was in and around his property. When he exited his house and while standing on his porch, he saw the police surrounding his home. The officers asked if he was Mark Herring and told him to put his hands up. Following the police request, Mark immediately threw his gun down and raised his arms. Moments later, Mark stumbled to the ground, suffering a fatal heart attack. Mark was taken to Sumner Regional Medical Center. Ooh, this story just gets me going. As the family arrived at the Sumner Regional Medical Center, they discovered from the medical staff that a 911 call was placed stating that a man had killed a woman. The address of the incident was that of Mark Herring's home. I personally can't even imagine how Mark's family felt at that moment. Let me be clear, no one was harmed in Mark's home. The 911 call that was placed was a prank call known as swatting. Swatting is a criminal harassment tactic deceiving an emergency service like 911 into sending a police or emergency service response team to another person's address. This is triggered by false reporting of a serious law enforcement emergency such as a bomb threat, murder, hostage situation, or a false report of a mental health emergency such as reporting that a person is allegedly suicidal or homicidal and may or may not be armed. Shane Soderman. Shane Soderman, who at the time was a minor, along with other teenagers, were part of a scheme to acquire social media handles to sell on the internet. And this is according to an indictment which can be found below. Soderman and his co-conspirator teenage friends had collected all of Mark's family's information including their addresses. He then put the information on a Discord channel, which is a chat forum used a lot by those who play video games. The information was placed on there in an effort to intimidate Mark into turning over his Twitter handle. Mark Herring was one of five people targeted by these evil, scheming, dirtbag teenagers to acquire social media handles and sell them on the internet. One of the teenagers, also a minor from the United Kingdom, placed the hoax 911 call, causing a police presence at Mark Herring's home. The police arrived expecting to find a female who had died from a gunshot wound and the possibility of the home's exit doors being booby-trapped. Sonderman was eventually arrested and the unknown conspirator teenager from the United Kingdom, due to being a minor, was not extradited to face charges in the United States. It is unclear at this time if he will ever be charged. When and if that information becomes available, we'll be sure to make an update. Shane Soderman was sentenced to five years in jail, being charged with wire fraud, interstate communication of threats, false information, hoaxes, and conspiracy. Sonderman agreed to plead guilty in March of 2021 to the conspiracy charge in exchange for other charges to be dropped. So in conclusion, 
The internet, and in particular social networking media sites, can be a great place to connect and gain all kinds of knowledge. It can also be a dark and dangerous place. Please, please, if you are a parent, be mindful of your child's online activities. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do about adults who use the internet for nefarious reasons. If you or anyone you know has been subject to harassment, doxing, or threatening behavior, make sure to document the occurrences. Take screenshots of the threats as evidence. These criminal acts can be reported to the social media and or networking sites, your local law enforcement, and the FBI. Don't ever take these types of harassment lightly. Thanks for watching another episode of True Crimes and Mysteries with Ricochet Reigns. If you enjoy our content and would like to support our videos, remember, it doesn't cost a dime, not even a penny. Just hit that thumbs up button, or better yet, follow us. We'll see you next time on True Crimes and Mysteries with Ricochet Reigns.